welcome back guys let's let's continue with chapter number 1 this is part 2 in the previous part we just introduced ourselves to the idea of artificial intelligence and define something called as state space now from this particular chapter they can ask us some simple numericals now let's get started with the first one this is it the first one is the water jug problem examination point of view this is a pretty important question has appeared in quite a few papers and has been pretty consistent over the years So what exactly is the question please you are given two jugs of capacities 4 gallons and 3 gallons each neither of the jugs have any measuring markers on them there is a pump that can be used to fill the jugs with water how can you get exactly 2 gallons of water in the 4 gallon jug now please read the question carefully before we actually get started with the solution the question is is pretty much a puzzle it says you've got two jugs capacities 3 gallons and 4 gallons obviously without any markers on them and the and the target here is to get 2 gallons of water in the 4 gallon jug that's it now how do i do this without any markers now the idea here is that as humans we can solve this particular problem you try getting the solution first maybe few trial and errors and you'll get the solution and later on the idea is i want the system to generate the solution for me now it will be great if you can try this get the solution first on your own and then proceed to the next part of the video where i discuss the solution So now if i need to give you the solution for this this is what is the solution what i can do is initially both the jugs are empty i'll start by filling the 3 gallon jug then i'll pour all the water from 3 gallon to 4 gallon so this is now 3 this becomes empty i pour the uh, sorry i fill the 3 gallon jug again so this is what is the status now i'll pour water from 3 gallon jug to 4 gallon jug till the 4 gallon jug is full now as i do that this jug becomes full so it is now 4 gallons and what is left over here is 2 gallons of water i know that i've got 2 gallons of water this is what i was looking for but i need this in the 4 gallon jug so i just empty the 4 gallon jug this still remains the same and then i pour all the water over here and this is my solution now this is one of the so many possible solutions that you can get but the idea here is that you had some information which you analyzed and which you applied on trial and error basis and finally you got the solution now imagine that you have a system in front of you a computer system and you place the same problem to that computer system for that computer system to be able to generate the solution that you just did it also needs the information that you have and unless i give all that information to the computer i can't expect it to generate the solution so let us now design a system let us now design a solution wherein my system will have all the information that we did with reference to the jugs and then using that information the system will also try and generate a solution for us so here we go so what do we do in the water jug problem or for that matter for any problem that we solve in ai we always start like this i'll first come and define a state understand eventually we are going to implement all this in the form of uh, uh, in the form of functions in in my programs right so how do we do how do we go about it defining the state let the state be given as x comma y where x is the amount of water in the 4 gallon jug and y is the amount of water in the 3 gallon jug i'll also define the initial and the final state i'm planning to start with two empty jugs and i want 2 gallons of water in the 4 gallon jug i don't care what is the status of the 3 gallon jug then but understand this i cannot just give the initial and the final state and expect the system to just gen generate the result just like that Now when I gave you the question and if you could get the solution it was because you had some information about the jugs which at the moment the system doesn't So in my step 3 I'm going to give some information to the system about the jugs using which it can generate the solution that we did So let us let us try and understand what all information we had about the jugs maybe I could have filled up the 3 gallon jug I could have filled up the 4 gallon jug I could have emptied a 3 gallon jug I could have emptied a 4 gallon jug and so on I'll give all the operations that are possible with these two jugs to the system and let's see how it goes here it is defining the production rules this is the information that we are giving to the system fill the 4 gallon jug when not full so now if the amount of water in the 4 gallon jug is x and amount of water in the 3 gallon jug is y what i plan to do is i plan to fill up this jug so i know that there is 4 gallons of water i still don't know about this but for me to be able to do this there has to be some space in the jug that is x has to be less than 4 that is that the jug should not, should not be full before i actually take up this step exactly the same thing fill 3 gallon jug when not full as of now this is the water this jug gets full i still don't know about this one and 
this is again possible when the amount of water in the three gallon jug is less than its maximum capacity. Now, I could have done something like this, pour some water out of four gallon jug. Now, suppose X is the amount of water in the four gallon jug and Y is the amount of water in the three gallon jug and say D is the amount of water that I'm pouring out of the four gallon jug. So what remains in my four gallon jug is X minus D and what remains in the three gallon jug is Y. But for this to happen, X has to be greater than zero. So what this means is that there has to be some water in that jug and D has to be less than X. What this means is that the amount of water that I throw out of out of uh, the four gallon jug has to be less than the amount of water which is there. Similarly, pour some water out of three gallon jug. If D is the amount of water which I throw out of three gallon jug, this is what I'm left with and I have similar conditions. Empty the four gallon jug. If this is the amount of water in both the jugs, I empty the four gallon jug. So this becomes zero. This remains the same. Empty three gallon jug. If this is the amount of water, then if I empty three gallon jug, this remains the same. And I empty this where Y is greater than zero, where X is greater than zero. Now, please understand rule number seven and eight properly. Pour some water out of three gallon jug into the four gallon jug till the four gallon jug is full. Now, over here, I'm planning to pour water from three gallon jug to four gallon jug till the four gallon jug is full. Now, please understand this. Say if X is the amount of water in the four gallon jug and Y is the amount of water in the three gallon jug. Now, I plan to pour water from this jug to this jug till this four gallon jug becomes full. But let me just figure out okay, what is the amount of water needed to fill up this jug. If the capacity is four gallons and X is already there, so the amount of water needed to fill up this jug is four minus X. Now, from where do I intend to get this water? Obviously, I'm pouring that water out of this three gallon jug. So once I complete this step, my this jug is full. So from X and Y, this becomes four. And what is the amount of water left? Y minus whatever is the amount of water that was used up for filling up this jug. So this becomes Y minus four minus X. I hope this is clear. Now for this to happen, one, there should be some space in the four gallon jug and the collective amount of water in both the jugs has to be greater than or equal to the maximum capacity of this jug else it will never get filled up i'll have something similar for my three gallon jug pour some water out of four gallon jug into three gallon jug till the three gallon jug is full now please understand this if x is the water in four gallon jug and y is the amount of water in three gallon jug the amount of water needed to fill up three gallon jug is three minus y so once I complete this step from X and Y, the second jug gets filled up. So this becomes three. And what uh, happens to this four gallon jug? The amount of water remaining is X minus, sorry, X minus whatever is the amount of water that was needed to fill up this jug. So it is X minus three minus Y. Similar step. I hope this is clear. Others are pretty straightforward. Pour all the water from three gallon jug into four gallon jug. So if this is X and Y, if I transfer all the water Y, so this becomes X plus Y and this obviously is empty. Over here, one, I should have water here. And second is the combined amount of water in both the jugs should be less than or maximum equal to the capacity of the four gallon jug. Now, else if, if this is not true and if I have more water in that case, the water will just spill over, right? Or it will overflow, which is something which we don't want. Similarly, pour all the water from four gallon jug into three gallon jug. I pour all the water from four to three. So this is what it is where I have water in this jug and the capacity and the total amount of water should be less than or max equal to the capacity of the three gallon jug. Now over here, I've added one more rule. Empty four gallon jug if there is two gallons of water in the three gallon jug. Suppose a situation arises where I don't know what is the amount of water in the four gallon jug, but I know for sure that there are two gallons of water in the three gallon jug. What I'll do in such a case is I'll just empty this particular jug so that this water can be poured into this jug later on. And same thing, rule number 12, pour two gallons of water from three gallon jug into four gallon jug. What happens over here is from zero to it becomes two zero. So in my step three, I've given you all the production rules precisely. We have given you all the information that is needed for solving this problem. So if I want the system to solve this water jug problem for me, this is the information that the system can use and generate the solution. But how will the system go about generating the solution? So this is the solution given to us by the system. Observe this. It starts over here. It applies rule number two, comes here applies rule number nine comes here the rules that i've mentioned are the ones that we just discussed rule number one here rule number seven and so on so this is how using all the rules that we have defined the system is going to get me the solution
so this is how your water jug problem can be implemented you can use any number of rule any number of times the rules could have been written in any sequence it doesn't make a difference water jug problem an important question let's move on to the next problem again a small puzzle missionaries and cannibals problem now what exactly is a missionary and a cannibal problem now in this problem three missionaries and three cannibals are on one side of the river they all need to cross the river using a boat that can hold a maximum of two people find a way to get everyone on the other side of the river without ever leaving the group of missionaries outnumbered by the cannibals at any time in the solution one give the solution steps two if the cost of every state where the number of missionaries change is four and for the state where the number of cannibals change is six then what is the cost of reaching the goal state consider the left side of the bank as a reference now over here this question has been given to us in the form of a game where they've assigned us certain points for every step so what i now need to do is whenever i'm applying a step depending on whether the number of missionaries are changing or whether the number of cannibals are changing i need to keep on adding up the points and finally whatever is the total number of points that is the final score for the solution now let us see how exactly do we start by this again i'll advise you that you try and get the solution on your own get the steps and then you can go to the next slide and see my solution try and avoid going to the solutions directly without thinking over these problems on your own better get your solution first and then go ahead here comes my solution i'll again start like what we did in the water jug problem by defining the state i'm going to define a state which is going to have three values for me missionaries which will give me the number of missionaries cannibals which is going to give me the number of cannibals and the bank side left or right okay defining the initial and the final state initial state is there are three missionaries there are three cannibals all on the left side final state is there are three missionaries three cannibals all on the right side okay so how do we start here are the steps solution steps i've started with three missionaries and three cannibals on the left hand side what i do is i first ask the two cannibals to go on this side so what happens is there are no missionaries over here there are two cannibals obviously one cannibal and three missionaries are left on the left side and this is what is the status on the right side now as per the question the state where the number of cannibals has changed is the score is six and wherever the number of uh, uh, missionaries are changing is four now because the number of cannibals changed over here so my score at the moment is six i'll keep on adding to it what i do then is one of the cannibals will go back with the boat now once this step is over then i'm left with one cannibal here this one cannibal has come over here so i'm left with three missionaries and two cannibals again even in this step the number of cannibals has changed so my score now is six plus six it now becomes 12. then i'll have two cannibals moving from left to right so this is what is the status score is this out of which one cannibal will come back this is what is the status on the left hand side again the cannibals are changing now for the first time i'll have two missionaries moving from left side to right side observe this over here on the left hand side the number of missionaries is the same as the number of cannibals the the constraint here is the number of cannibals should never be more than the number of missionaries which i guess is getting satisfied in all the steps that we have seen so far right okay so i have two missionaries coming this way now if you observe in this step it's the missionaries who are changing so the score is 24 plus 4 which is 28 after this I have one missionary and one cannibal coming back. Now over here, if you observe in this step, this is for the first time that we have both the values changing, the number of missionaries and number of cannibals. What we know is whenever the number of cannibals are changing, it is six, the score has to be six. And uh, whenever it's the missionaries, it is four. So the state where we have both these changing, I'll take the average of the two. So the average of six and four is five. So from my previous slide where I had 28, I've added five to it. So it is 33 now. The two missionaries come this side. This is my score. One cannibal, this, this, this. I'll use all this. And finally, I come to a solution where I have three missionaries and three cannibals on the right hand side. And my score is 61. I don't say this is a unique solution or this is a perfect solution a different, or the perfect score because there are so many different possible combinations over here. Depending on the number of combinations, depending on the number of states that you have, the number of steps that you use, accordingly, you will have the cost of the solution. 
but none of these problems be it a water jug problem or be it uh, this one or be it uh, the problems who come like wumpus world and stuff you will not have a unique solution so that is what is your missionaries and cannibals problem and that is also the end of the first chapter that is also the end of the first chapter for us we'll stop here we'll we'll take a break at the moment and i'll see you all again with the next chapter thank you and keep learning and keep exploring till we meet again with the next chapter thank you